would say I faced very subtle kinds of prejudice, like, um, especially for example in York, because it's very, um, most people are either students or very, can I say white? <laughs> yeah, of course it's <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, white middle class. Oh, York is very no, not just mid- white middle class, like a retirement village essentially. <laughs> it's either students or retired We're not going to get hate messages from Muslims <laughs> for this video. We're going to get hate messages from some people, random people from York. Today, I'm here with the lovely Nurhan. Uh, Nurhan, what's your second name? No. no, we're not saying my second name. Oh, we're not saying no. We're not saying her second name. <laughs> but we're, and we're here with the lovely Nurhan, uh, without second name, to talk about uh, a really important issue that um, I think gets heavily politicized, which is about Islamophobia, or what you know, what I usually call it, anti-Muslim prejudice. I would say there are two main reasons why we're talking about it. The first one being that anti-Muslim bigotry is a real issue, mm. and a lot of Muslims face different forms of prejudice and racism and um, especially with like the increase in I mean, I mean just after these attacks the that attacks happened in Brussels and Istanbul and Nigeria like there's a, there's always going to be a reaction to that yeah and sometimes mm. a lot of Muslims have to unfairly be put in the situation where they have to give explanations and yeah um, and that's not fair. I mean, there was that there was that guy. I don't know if you know about this. Uh, he posted on Twitter saying, "Today I went up to a Muslim woman." And I was like, going, "How do you explain this? <laughs> yeah, how do you explain Brussels?" <laughs> and she was just like, what? Yeah. What's happening? like, "And then there are also the more serious things, yeah, yeah. like the story you were saying about someone getting stabbed with scissors, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. then just an increase in the yeah. use of slurs and whatnot." Yeah. And the second reason why we're talking about it is how, the, because of how the term is sometimes used to silence important discussions about problems in the Muslim community or radicalization and problems or, within Islam as a religion as well as a concept there's no way around to kind of get around the politicized discussion and, yeah. and what we're doing this video for is to try to untangle some of that politicization and try to understand really what are we talking about and what should we be talking about and what should we have the freedom to talk about when it comes to Islam and Muslims yeah. one thing that's important to know about Islamophobia is like one of the first times that it was discussed it, the definition was actually an unfounded hostility towards Muslims, right? So it it didn't even mention Islam. The first real definition from 1991 didn't even mention Islam. And what's happened is since then in the Oxford Dictionary, if you look at the definition, it's actually now about Islam and Muslims. They put them together. And I find that to be very interesting. It's a bit of like a, it's, 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 it's actually gone down the Orientalist route almost because if you look at early Orientalist texts, they used to even refer to um, Muslims as Muhammadans, and yeah. there was a lot of conflation between Islam and Muslims. And mm -hmm. what's happened is that slowly separated because you know actually Muslim communities are cultural communities. The Pakistanis are very different to Somali Muslims. There's so much pluralism right. in all Muslim communities. But actually, with the definition, it's changed. It's become Orientalist again. So it's it's now conflating Islam and Muslims again. And now it's conflating the criticism of ideas with the criticism exactly, yeah. of with just hating on people. Sure. Some people could would say, okay, if you make a point about how if you harshly criticize Islam, if you say uh, Muhammad did certain things such as. Um, having slaves or starting wars and you make certain um, statements about Islam and we know that Muslims follow, will, Islam. follow yeah. Islam and believe that Muhammad is a role model to follow and so on aren't you indirectly kind of saying the Muslims will be violent or Muslims will be if you say the Quran is violent you can say that about Christianity or Judaism so I can open up the Torah Mm -hmm. uh, the Torah or some of the early you know, the scripture basically and I can say there are certain things in here that someone who is Jewish could take and say that is how we should live and that violence is acceptable in modern day but they not all of them do like you know I wouldn't if I made that claim about Jews then I'm being anti-semitic but if I say the Torah contains passages which can be seen as violent yeah. I'm attacking the idea so you, while you're right we seem to only say that about Muslims. But then sometimes people say this about Muslims um, because of the fact that way more Muslims today take the Quran very literally and take the word of, um, like, just are a lot more observant than, for example, Jews or Christians. But what I would say to this is actually, um, you know what, even within people who are 
believers and believe the Quran is the infallible word of God, they find there are so many different mm-hmm. ways of looking at the text. Yeah. And there is so much pluralism in thought and Islam also means different things to yeah, different yeah, people. Absolutely. It's not just about the scripture. It's there is tradition, there is like a thousand four hundred years of Islamic philosophy. I, I would almost say it's very dangerous. In fact, in a funny way, it is anti Muslim to use the word Islamophobia when you're referring to the criticism of ideas. Why? Because if you talk to a Shia about Abu Huraira, right, who is one of the most yeah. senior, like, he, he, he did, I think, was it 5,200 and something hadith? Yeah. He's um, one of the biggest hadith, um, you know, which is the same as Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of Shias have huge problems with Abu Huraira. Um, Not just Abu Huraira, with Umar ibn al-Khattab yeah, and yeah, yeah, Abu yeah, Bakr. Yeah. So yeah. if you talk to a Shia, they'll criticize what they consider is Sunni Islam, mm-hmm. In the same way that someone who's not who's not even a Muslim mm-hmm. will criticize Sunni yeah. Islam, right? So you're actually shutting down the discourse within Muslim communities mm-hmm. by using the word Islamophobia to shut down. The you're just of enforcing ideas. this yeah. uh, this taboo and this idea that some things are holy and should not be um, talked about or criticized. Yeah. Um, because Sunnis might be like, oh, you're not allowed to criticize the companions of the Prophet. Because of this sensitivity and this idea that we should respect all cultures, we should respect um, people's beliefs, which is important, but sometimes people take it a bit overboard. So um, when I was a very observant Muslim, and I had times, for example, when I would be like, okay, I want to go to the atheist and agnostic society and just sit there steer, and look very creepy. <laughs> and, um, and I was waiting to have discussions about God and religion. And maybe it's in part due to like the Dawa person who was in me. It was like, <laughs> I want to make Dawa. But I also just was genuinely interested in, in talking about things. And I found that people can be oversensitive. They're really they, protective. They're you know? very yeah. scared of offending you. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I've been, I, there was this person I was friends with for maybe a year. And then he was like... Um, I was always too scared of asking this, but you don't eat pork, right? Like, <laughs> why, is that, that. why is this such a <laughs> why is this such a sensitive question to ask? It seems like like at the yeah. time, it's like yeah. yeah, I don't for religious reasons, yeah. and that was the end of it. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you this question: Were you ever subject to anti-Muslim bigotry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I uh, I grew up in Saudi Arabia, and I'm British, but I grew up in Saudi Arabia. But I also came here when I was uh, like 12, 13. And for very, very random reasons, I got, I ended up in a really, really, really like racist school. And there was like four Muslims at the time when I joined. <laughs> and um, like, I, uh, you know, there was no real problem with me kind of around that time. But the problem is after 9-11 happened, you know, the kids were all reading like the sun. Right. And that kind of influenced how they thought about mm-hmm. um, uh, how they thought about Muslims and uh, their role in the world and all that. So I actually have a T-shirt, uh, which I've... T- I found in my in my yeah. 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 so uh, I've actually not shown this. I, 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 a few people know about this, but not that many. But it kind of gives you an idea of kind of the views people had. I just want you to read. like so that, for example. Uh, I'll put pictures up of this uh, later, but that's actually a bomb thing. So I don't know if you can see it. It's like it's upside down. It looks like a coil. Yeah, it's a really badly drawn bomb thing, but it's like it's like a bomb vest thing. Oh, because my my nickname at school was terrorist. Um, here, so like for example, like that. Is that how it landed? <laughs> That's how it landed. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. It's a really bad dream. And he goes, "What does it say here?" Um, I wanna be Bin Laden. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh my god. So there was. Um, I mean, there's more stuff here. Did it's you mo- get called the Paki? What do you? They didn't call me a Paki. They should call you Paki's a Bengali like a terrorist, pa- not a Paki terrorist. <laughs> no, I wasn't called a Paki because Paki was quite sort of a. It's not a done thing so much at that time. So. Like, let's see. Some of the messages are nice. Yeah, they, a lot of them are nice. I mean, there's you know. Some people liked you. Yeah, some people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's sweet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. MTS, good luck with terrorist training. <laughs> That's sweet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, there was this kind of stuff. What's really interesting about it is it's not necessarily done in a very overtly mean way. 
it's often banter, right? That's how, often mm. how these things develop. It's a bit like racism, you know. You can sometimes have, you can sometimes be at a party or something like that, and someone will say something and they say it with a smile, but it's yeah. a bit like it's a bit racist. Like Asian jokes or Arab yeah, jokes. Yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah. you always make fun of Arabs and. I don't do that. Uh, anyways, well, so we're better, so that's yeah. not. <laughs> you see that? I know you grew up in Egypt, so mm. I imagine the situation there is different. But did you face any anti-Muslim stuff when you came to Britain? I would say I never faced anything explicit. It was if I ever felt a certain amount of hostility, it was very subtle, and I never really thought much of it. Maybe it's because I came here as a university student, mm. and everyone I really I interacted with was generally very aware of this very aware stuff, and yeah. educated, and people didn't really like would never even make comments about being Muslim. Sometimes mm. I was annoyed by people not bringing up me being Muslim because I like talking about my <laughs> Muslimness. This is the whole Dawa thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me tell you about my your Lord and Savior. My let me ask me why <laughs> I went the hijab. Ask me. <laughs> How do we criticize Islam and even criticize Islam harshly without perpetuating the shitty, uh, shitty, shitty behavior, shitty behavior <laughs> and without getting used by yeah, yeah. like the far right oh and... man that's so difficult one way that's worked for me is to just as openly when i do see people retweeting stuff or mm -hmm. you know if they're clearly like crazy far right people who are just against as much against me as a as someone you know who's in this country as a as a, as a, as a, as a second generation immigrant um and you know british but second generation you know call them out as well so i do call them out yeah and what that means though and this is where it gets really in, like fun is that you then have the far right who hate you and then you yeah. also have like people who are really defensive about islam and you know are, are, are using the word islamophobia as a tool to 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 shut yeah. any kind of dissent you yeah. get them both against you it's and really it's a hard. very unfortunate problem no, to have really because is. ideally what you want is people who are very progressive and liberal supporting this kind of free speech mm. and supporting this kind of debate but you don't always it's not always the case i think it also affects our like if you talk about bme communities like black and ethnic minority communities it affects us because if you know there was uh, if you look at fem feminists in the arab world as mm. i'm sure you know they get called things like native informants all the time just like we do yeah. and that's because they're seen as importing a western thing feminism into the arab world and and the worst thing is they're often called that also by non arab People in yeah, the, in, and that's in, where like the uh, cultural relativism and the idea that okay, so what's true for our, c our culture mm. and certain universal values do not necessarily apply to this other culture, and sure. have to respect it. And what this does, it actually supports the most conservative elements Absolutely, within these cultures. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and and it, it, like, it, it shuts uh, our it sh civil rights. It, it, the civil rights movements that are happening and that will continue happening in these countries and in these communities are being shut down. The two main things we want you guys to get out of this is that, first of all, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being critical of um, ideas and of criticizing things which are meant to be holy, scripture, having really open, honest discussions about these topics without feeling like you need to censor yourself. Mm. While also the... Yeah, well also like I think just being very aware that this is a problem. There is a huge problem with people generalizing mm. ideas onto populations and communities and saying, you know, um, terrorism comes because you've got really, really extreme things in your religion and therefore you all must be terrorists or something like that because you follow your religion. And it's just not true. There's a lot more diversity in thought uh, within these kind of communities. And I think if we're not self-aware about these things, we can help perpetuate them. Um, but also, please do not use the word Islamophobia if you don't know what it means. It's just... I would say just avoid just, the term in general. I think um, anti-Muslim bigotry yeah, and prejudice so much and racism yeah. capture the meaning Absolutely. so much better. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Islamophobia just conflates too much between... Mm. Between open discussion yeah. and hatefulness, which yeah, is absolutely. bad, open discussion is good. Thanks for watching this. Um, if you liked what we do, uh, subscribe down down there. Uh, also check out the Faith to Faithless channel, which is uh, where we do talks about um, leaving religion of all kinds. Um, and yeah, so okay. until next time. Bye. You're supposed to wave, Nohan. That was too late. But we're going to do this again. Okay. So thanks. <laughs> So thanks okay. for thanks for thanks I for. I clearly don't do this ever. Okay, <laughs> never done this in my life. <laughs> okay, thanks. I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> who are we? Who are you? Guys? There's people in the back. <laughs>